Welcome. It's been pointed out to me there's a gap in my videos. In one video, we proved a formula for the sum of the first n counting numbers. It turns out to be n squared plus n all over 2. In another video, I proved the sum of the first uh, n cubed numbers. 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed all the way up to n cubed. And it turns out to be n squared times n plus 1 squared all over 4. So the obvious gap is, what is the sum of the first n square numbers? It's 2 squared plus 3 squared, oops, can I even write them, n squared. Uh, you might know the formula, you might be told by some class that it turns out to be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And now having told that formula, you can verify it by induction or something. But that's not very satisfying, you have no sense of where this formula comes from. So what I'd like to do in this video is derive this formula using very, very basic ideas. There's lots of good ways to do it. And I'm going to use one that, that, that speaks to a method I used to prove the sum of the counting numbers formula, which was to look at squares and the diagonals. And I also used it in my sum of cubes formula, where I actually looked at, this, looked at um, well, not just diagonals, but uh, L shapes and rows in, a, in the square of the multiplication table, all the products that you see in a, in a multiplication table. So let me do a technique and sort of brings everything together and comes up with this bizarre looking formula for the sum of the square numbers. I'm going to use one fact about squares. In fact, it's my favorite fact that demonstrates the power of a picture. And um, it appears in many of my videos. So forgive me for just repeating this, this little piece of joy right now. But suppose I gave you a picture like this and I asked you, what do you see? And most people say they see 16 dots. They didn't actually count literally 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 16. They saw a 4 by 4 array of dots. So I say this is really a picture of an example of 4 times 4 being 16. And I say, well, actually, I see something different. I see a picture of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. Well, if you look diagonally, there's one dot plus another two dots plus another three dots plus another four dots, one dot, two dots, three dots, four dots, and they keep going, it starts going down, three dots, two dots, one dot. So it tells me I can write 4 squared, 16 dots, as a sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And if you go to the video on the sum of the first n counting numbers, you're basically right there for a sum of the formulas for them. In fact, I can see 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 right there, so I can just play with this formula. In fact, I kind of got it again there, but if I add 4 to both sides, now yeah, yeah. The feature I want to use is the fact that any square number can be thought of as the sum of the numbers that appear in its diagonals, if I literally look at its picture. So 3 squared, for example, would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And 2 squared would be 1 plus 2 plus 1. And 1 squared would just be 1, and so on. All right, that's the fact I'd like to use for the sum of the first n square numbers. So let's get cracking. All right, let me uh, do something. Let's do, say, the sum of the first five square numbers. I mean, I'll do it in gen general, but just so I can draw the actual pictures. Let's just look at this guy for the moment. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. Well, 1 squared is this dot. It's a picture of a 1 by 1, not very exciting. 2 squared is this. If I look at the diagonals, it's really 1 plus 2 plus 1. I'm not bothering to write the plus signs. We need to add up all these numbers on the right. 3 squared is a 3 by 3 array. So I look at the diagonals, it's 1 dot, 2 dot, 3 dots, 2 dots, 1 dot. 4 squared is a 4 by 4 array, what we did before. 1 dot, 2 dots, 3 dots, 4 dots, then 3 dots, 2 dots, 1 dot. And 5 squared, but I'm not, I'm not really drawing it, it's 1 dot, 2, 3, 4, 5 dots, 4 dots, 3 dots, 2 dots, 1 dots. So the sum of the first 5 squared numbers, the sum of all these numbers I've just splattered around on the right here. Well, look at what the numbers we've got on the right. I've got 1, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So it's actually the, all the numbers, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus, I've basically got the same sort of thing again, plus another 1, another 1, 2, another 1, 2, 3, another 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So really what I need to do, the sum of the first five square numbers is the sum of all the numbers in one triangular array, plus the sum of all the numbers in a slightly smaller triangular array. So if I can figure out a clever way to add up the numbers in a triangular array like this, all I have to do is do one answer here, plus a second answer, I've got a formula for the sum of the squares. So I've reduced the problem to adding up numbers in the sums of a triangular array. I've got an array that's five rows long, plus a row of 
one that's four rows long, long for this particular example of the sum of the first five squares. But you know, I might have a bigger triangular array, so let's do some one that's kind of juicy. What's a good way, without me actually sitting down and doing all the hard work, of working out the sum of all the numbers in a triangular array, three, uh, this is how long do I want to go? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'll do one more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's a big juicy triangular array. How can I add up these numbers efficiently without going, um, getting out of calculator and doing it all by hand? Well, I could say, in this picture, I've got eight ones. Plus, I have to add to that seven twos. Plus one, two, three, six threes. Plus one, two, three, uh, five fours. Plus four fives. Plus three sixes. Plus two sevens. Plus one eight. So actually, the numbers in a triangular array, array eight rows long, is this kind of lovely symmetrical sum. Now, of course, I could work at each product and add them up, and, but I wanted sort of a general form of what's going on. So now my question is, how could I work out a nice general way of computing 8 times 1 plus 7 times 2 plus 6 times 3 plus 7 times 4 and so on? All right. Well, this is going to take a bit of mulling and doing. It requires a real epiphany. There's no reason one would think of doing this right away, except that if you start playing with pictures like I do, I love, love to think visually, you can come up with ways and your mind starts to think, think sort of mysterious thoughts. What I'm going to do is something strange. I want to work out the sum, but I'm going to think of it as a puzzle involving colouring 10 dots. Whoops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to ask, how many ways could I colour three of these dots green? Well, I could do one way, I could do it like this. There's three of the dots green. Whoops, the whole screen went green. Take that back. Um, I guess I've got to. Oh, I know what, there's a little gap there, silly me. Now let's paint it green again. There's one way to paint them all green. Or, what's another way to paint them all green? Maybe I could do something like uh, this one, oops, this one, this one, this one. Or maybe I could do this one. Yeah, well, you get the idea. How many ways can I choose three green? Well, in classic, you know, permutations, combinations work, if you're in high school doing a very classic course, you say, well, this is simply a matter of choosing three dots out of out of 10 to be colored green. So you'd call this 10 choose 3 in high school. Or if you're in college, you'd write 10, 3 this way. Or if you take my version of permutations and combinations, which I don't believe in those words, to me this is a labeling problem. I've got 10 objects, 3 are to be labeled green, and 7 to be labeled left alone. Anyhow, so we worked it out. So there's the answer. That's the number of ways to label three things green. Or I could solve this puzzle a different way. Let's, um, let's unlabel stuff. Whoops, sorry, where's my paint? Oh, do, 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 do. There are going to be three dots of the green. Let's focus on the center dot for the moment. Which dot could be a center dot? Well, this could be a center dot. I can't have the leftmost dot being a center dot because there's going to, have to be some green one to its left and some green one to its right. So this could be a center, or this one could be a center, or this one could be a center. Any of these dots here could be the center dot. For example, if this guy's with the center dot, then I have a left, dot, left green dot somewhere to the left, and a right green dot somewhere to its right. Let's go through them in turn. If this guy is the center dot, how many ways can I complete the picture of choosing the other two dots, one to the left, one to the right? Well, clearly, I've got one option for the dot to the left, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options for the dot on the right. So it gives me a total of one times eight options if this, this spot is the center dot. Well, if that's not the center dot, and this one instead is, that's the other, another possibility. I'm going to go through all the possibilities of which ones could be center dots. Well, I would say to myself, okay, there's a green dot somewhere to the left, two ways to get a, oops, ooh, bad. Two ways to get a dot to the left, seven ways to get a dot to the right. So there's an, an extra two times seven options. Or if this guy's the center dot, it's plus three options to the left for the left dot, six dots to the right. Plus maybe this is the center dot, four options to the left, times five options to the right, all the way down to this last guy here being the center dot, in which case I've got eight options to the left and one option to the right. But that's precisely the sum we wanted in the triangular array. So I could think of the sum in the triangular array 
as precisely the same puzzle as choosing three dots out of eight to be green, uh, out of ten to be green. And of course, that is given by the formula here. I've had two more dots than the number of I had an array of eight rows. Turns out I needed um, ten dots because I was focusing on where could a left dot be and where could a right dot be once I figured out where the center dot's going to be and go through all the possible options of where the center dot could be. So in general, it looks like we've now discovered this formula for the sum of any triangular array. If I just clear some space. Uh, let's do this in uh, some other color. That if I did one, one, two, one, one, two, three, all the way up to one, two, three, up to say n, I could think of the answer here as n ones plus n minus one twos. Very bad writing. Ooh, my pen has been crazy today. Sorry. All the way up, or I could think of this as draw two more extra dots and figure out all the ways to choose three to be green, which is given by the formula n plus two factorial all over three factorial n uh, minus one factorial. Actually, I can do some little algebra here. This is n plus two times n plus one all over n divided by three factorial, which is six. All right, brilliant, 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 brilliant. So back to the five square problem, we've got our answer. This first triangular array is going to be given by two more dots, seven choose three. The second triangular array is going to be given by two more dots, six choose three. Voila, there's the sum of the first five square numbers. Or if I did this for for n, up to say n squared, it's going to be two more dots, choose three, plus the array slightly less, I need some space, uh, pencil, and plus one, choose three, one less. And if you've got the patience, oh, I guess we can do it. If you substitute these formulas n, you see this is n plus two times n plus one times n divided by six plus n plus one times n times n minus one divided by six, and put all together you get n, n plus one times two n plus one, I'm right, n plus two, n minus one is two, yep, two n plus one all over six. There is the formula for the sum of the first n squared numbers. Whew. All right, now I always have a little mystery and I've got a, a, quite a serious mystery to go with this video. Um, look at the sort of formulas we're getting. Let me summarize all the work we've done in the videos on the sums of powers business. I need my pen again. Let's be serious, let's do it in black. We've got 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n. We did the sum of the first counting numbers. We proved this was n squared plus n all over 2. Let me just write it out in sort of like glorious detail. A half n squared plus a half n. The sum of the first n squared numbers. Uh, now, it's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. If I expand that out, it turns out to be 1 third n cubed plus 1 half n squared plus 1 sixth of n. In another video, we did the sum of the first n cubed numbers. And if I expand it out, um, it turns out to be 1 fourth to the n fourth plus 1 half n squared uh, n cubed plus 1 quarter of n squared. If you like, I've done the sum of the first, second, and third powers. Here's the sum of the zeroth powers. So anything to the zero is one. Uh, the sum of the n ones is just n, so it's one n. All right. One thing that's not obvious, and here's a real serious question for you. Is it always true that if I did a formula for the sum of the various powers, like some of the first fourth powers, is it always going to be just a nice polynomial in n? Could there ever be like weird formulas like powers of two coming in, or sines or cosines, or exponents, or logs, or something? Who said there's going to always be polynomials every single time? Is it true that the sum of the fourth power's formula is a polynomial? The sum of the fifth power's formula is going to be a polynomial? The sum of the sixth power's formula is going to be a polynomial? Is that true? If so, why? How could you prove that these formulas are guaranteed to be polynomials? In fact, I'm going to give it away. This, that actually is a deep question. It's, it's very hard and it does turn out to be true. But it's not at all obvious. In fact, in fact I'm going to show you some patterns. The sum of the f uh, cubes turned to be a polynomial n to the fourth. Some of the squares had a polynomial n cubed. Some of the, uh, the one powers had a polynomial n squared. Some of the zero powers had a polynomial n to the one. 
So you'd probably conjecture the sum of the fourth powers is a polynomial in n to the fifth. Is that obvious? Could you see a reason why that would have to be true? Look at the coefficients. 1 half cubed fourth. You probably guess that the coefficient here is probably going to be a fifth. Can you prove that's true? Is that just, I mean, we can't just rely on pattern and say it must be true because of the pattern. Is that really the case? Another thing that's kind of interesting, look at the coefficients we get in general. In the first formula, we just got a 1. Not very exciting. In the second form, we've got a half and a half. What's a half plus a half? Adds up to 1. In the next form, we've got a third, a half, and a sixth. What do they add up to? They add up to 1. In the next form, we've got a quarter plus a half plus a quarter. And what do they add up to? A 1. Ooh, is it obvious that if it is a polynomial, given it away it is, that degree is always one more than the power you're summing with, and its front coefficient is always one, one over one more than the power you're summing with, but do the coefficients always add up to one? Is that always true, or just happens to be true for the first four examples? In fact, I can give you the formula for this fifth one. It's a, I happen to have worked it out, which I guess would be another video, how to work out some of the fourth powers, n cubed minus 1 30th n, and lo and behold, those coefficients add up to 1. Uh, next thing, do you see that all these polynomials have n as a factor? Is that just a coincidence, or is that going to have to be true? Must all these polynomials be divisible by n? In fact, if you've got the patience, you can check that all of them have n plus 1 as a factor as well. Is that really true in general? Very weird. This is a wonderful, rich topic. How do you find the formula for the sums of the powers? And this was the great work of the Bernoulli brothers and Euler, who actually came up with a very general way of thinking about this work. Lots of fun to be had here. Um, I actually wrote one little paper, if you go to a Math Horizons article and track it down, formula for the sums of powers. Um, I show a general technique for getting these things there. But uh, I actually don't like that paper anymore because I've, I've thought of much better ways of doing it. So I guess that needs to be a video. So um, sometime, when I've got the time, because this one gets, gets very complicated, what's the general way to work out the formulas for these things? Anyhow, see if you can figure out why these things even have to be polynomials to begin with. There's something to think about right there that's worthy unto itself. Thanks very much.